He was at one time my senator at the, at the Louisiana legislature. Um, he was at the, in the House of Representatives before that. And then in 1997, he ran successfully for the First Circuit Court of Appeal and has held that seat ever since. He is um, a member of the American and National Bar Association, the American Judges <coughs> Association. He has taught judges at every level. He is always interested in making the law better. And if you've ever had the pleasure of appearing in front of him in court, you know that that's the case. He is a measured jurist who believes in upholding the law. And so when I called him to ask him if he would do this, he was so gracious and right away answered yes. So I'm hoping that you'll get as much as I do out of talking to Mr. Gidry. He's a wonderful person. We are lucky to have him. Democracy. 
and that I was supposed to represent my constituency. At times I mirrored them, at times I acted as a delegate and had to sit in the rooms to hear the things they couldn't hear and, and hear the debates and look over documents that they didn't see and then make some decisions that I had to come back and explain to them why I was doing it. But in all of those instances, at the forefront of my mind was the fact that I was not there representing myself, but I was representing my constituency. And so then some people ask, well, what changed when uh, you went over to the judgeship? What changed is the fact that I changed positions. Uh, judges, uh, in the context of our constitutional scheme, although we are elected judges, we don't sit there representing constituents. We are supposed to be neutral arbiters, being concerned with the facts and the law. And I had to remind myself on a daily basis that I was no longer a legislator, that my role as a judge was not to be an activist judge, it was not to be a super legislator, but the law is the final expression of legislative will. And my job simply is to interpret the law and to make sure the constitutional protections that the law board is taken care of. And that judges have to serve without fear or without favor. Judges have to be unbought and unbossed. Judges have to be willing to accept the law that, is, that has been passed and to merely interpret that law. And so that's what changed. It was the fact that I changed positions. And so it's important to understand uh, in the context of separation of powers and checks and balance and the respective roles of the judiciary versus the political, uh, the political bodies in our government, the legislature, and the executive branch. And so we have to, first of all, make sure that we understand what are the respective roles. And then we need to hold people accountable uh, with respect to those roles. And so not only do we need to know what the various institutions are charged with doing, but we need to know the people that we are putting in office. And you can't wait until some, some instance of public policy is being debated in the halls of government to try to figure out who's representing you. Now is the time, and in Louisiana it's always political season. It's political season in Louisiana. It's time to Google folks, and it's time to go to their websites, and it's time to look at their campaign finance disclosures so that you can follow the other money, and to the extent that you can now, with dark money and super facts, but to the extent that you can, it gives you some insight on what you can expect out of these individuals once they are actually elected to office. And so you need to educate yourselves about those persons who are seeking your vote. And then you need to get in and you need to engage early. The early bird catches the worm. It is much too late when the legislative sessions are going on and the four years after election to get engaged. You have to get engaged now. You have to volunteer. You have to write the check. You have to go on the phone bank and go door to door. You have to make sure that you are actively engaged in being the change agents that you would like to see happen for the things that you would like to happen in society. You have to get involved early on because those persons are going to dance with the ones who bring to the party. They're going to remember the volunteers and they're going to remember those who are being supportive of their campaigns and they're going to remember those folks who help them get to the place they are. If you see good candidates, then they will never be able to act upon those ideas and on those visions and on those principles that you share with them unless they are elected. And they need you as engaged citizens to make sure good people get into office. And sometimes it will cause you to have to not only support candidates, but it may come a point where you have to be a candidate. We had Robert Kennedy who said so often some people see life as, as it is, and they ask why. But I agree with things that never were, and I ask why not. And you have to ask why is the public policy outcomes not only why are they what they are, but you have to think about the change that you want to see. And that's why as citizens, we have to take on our responsibilities. We have great rights in this country. We have, we have democratic rule and protection for the rights of, of even the minorities in our country, although we have a majority rule. But with every right comes a responsibility. It is our responsibility as citizens 
to be active participants, to rise with a greater readiness to stand with a newer determination and make sure that the changes that we would want to see are actively engaged in by participating in the process at the very early stage. And then even when those persons are elected, you have to show up at the committee hearings. You have to show up at the city councils and at the school boards. You have to write the emails and write the letters and make the phone calls and let them know that like our parents used to tell us, I brought you into this world and I will take you out. You have to let them know that I put you into office and I'm willing to take you out and work as hard if you don't represent me in these halls of government. I will be there at the next election working just as hard to remove you from that office. That is the democratic process. That's how we settle things in this country. We settle it at the ballot box. And that's what you have to be actively and involved and engaged in. And you have to make sure that you are continuing to hold people accountable. Power yields nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. And not only are we going to have to give account for the blatant and vitriolic words of bad people, but we're going to have to give account for the appalling of the good people, those who sit back and watch government be destructive of the ends to which it was established and not actively engage civilly in order to make a change in our society. And so I would suggest to you today that you are the beneficiaries of this trust that these elected officials hold. And you need to make sure that you hold people accountable, that you speak truth to power, and that you let people know that ultimately, the true power in this country resides in, in the citizenry. And that's why it's said that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Your life, your liberty, your pursuit of happiness is dependent upon your in being engaged and being watchful and making sure that government remains accountable to you. So I suggest to you again, now is the time to be involved, now is the time to be engaged, now is the time to let your voices to be heard, now is the time to do as Thurgood Marshall said, this is your democracy, you need to develop it, you need to protect it, you need to pass it on. And if you do what you're responsible for doing as citizens, that we will be able to make of America a much better nation. We have to recognize that it takes true patriotism to recognize that in America, our best days are not behind us, but the best is still yet to come. And the only way that we're going to ensure that is that we be active and that we be involved and that we participate in the body politic. In a real sense, we have only just a minute it has nearly 60 seconds in it, and it is forced upon us. We can't refuse it. Generations unborn will suffer if we lose it. We will give account if we abuse it. We have only just a minute, but the future of our democracy is wrapped up in it. 